Hi and welcome to the first in a series of what are now going to be weekly Retribution Paladin vlogs. Now, as people who have been following my channel will know, not only do I do Retribution Paladin guides, but also every so often, usually roughly once or twice uh, a patch or once a patch, I will do a live Retribution Paladin Q&A. But in the interim, I thought it might be nice to touch base every week with Retribution Paladin. Sometimes there isn't a guide to be done. There's only so many of those needs to be done. So I'm just going to basically answer some questions that come in. One question that comes in quite a bit of what do I think about the gear that we're going to be getting from Antorus. Antorus is still a little bit away, but it's going to be fast approaching. So I'm going to present my ideas here. And what I would say is that if you want me to talk about anything in particular, put it in the comments below. And as I say, each week I'm going to pick an interesting topic and talk about that. So when it comes to getting gear from a new raid, and Antorus is no different, we're focused in Legion on three things. Relics, tier, trinkets. So looking at relics first of all, now with the Netherlight Crucible of course, it's not as straightforward as oh, we definitely always want Wrath of the Ashbring or anything like that. That being said, we are still wanting Bish Relics and a Bish Relic is going to contain Wrath of the Ashbringer. So if we look through here at some of the Relics, so on the first boss here, and granted these are not always going to be in order, just like they haven't been at any tier so far. But we've got uh, the Bish Holy Relic is likely to be, and again, remember we can't say, because two very good, because they've all got tr two traits on them, it's just that one of them is unrevealed until we put it into the Crucible. And two very good traits would be better than one Bis trait and one worthless trait. But there is a Wrath of the Ashbringer Holy Relic again. Remember, this is great for us because we have two Holy Relic slots on one of the early bosses, the Anturan High Command. Now, when we run through these, we see we want to stay well clear of that one blessing of protection. No. Um, the best Fire Relic... Is not a wrath one. We're not going to get two wrath in the same one. We sort of know that. It's going to drop off one of the latter bosses, Varimathras, which is the one that increases damage dealt by Blade of Justice. But as I say, remember, when we're talking about Bis, what we actually mean is one that buffs Blade of Justice in all likelihood, um, or maybe one of two other things, but also one that buffs our Wrath of the Ashbringer. So what we'd be hoping for if we had this Fire Relic is Wrath of the Ashbringer on one of the ones from the Netherlight Crucible. But yet again, for the third tier raid in a row, we do have a Wrath of the Ashbringer relic that drops off one of the early bosses, which is great for us, because we means that we can get it on quite a high item level, just baseline. The fact that it's switched back to being holy, like it was in Nighthold, also means, well, that should be two of our relics covered. Assuming they drop, we seem to have a bit of a problem with that in my guild. And because it's an early boss, it also means you'll be killing that boss on a particular difficulty more than many of the others, which gives you a better chance in the long run of getting Titan Forge relics of that type. We just have to hope, as I say, that when the Netherlight Crucible gets it slotted, that it gives you a nice trait on that as well. Now, when it comes to tier... Two set bonuses. These could switch around, remember? Also, which bosses they drop off could switch around. That's happened before. That happened in the current tier. But as it stands, two set bonus means that judgment increased by 60%. That's going to be fantastic. It's going to yet again increase the value of our mastery. That was already increased a little bit recently. It's still not, you know, something we want a lot of. That being said, it is no longer something that we want to shun. It's sort of okay. It's just not preferable. 60% damage on Judgment. Well, all of a sudden, that could look quite good. Another talent that could look quite good, even on single target, is Greater Judgment. Now, I sometimes use Greater Judgment in Mythic Pluses now, if I'm using Blade of Wrath with it. But with this one, you might even use Greater Judgment on single target. But it'll be one of those, yet again, you know how it is in Legion. You'll have to sort of sim it for yourself. Because what good is Greater Judgment on a single target fight? Well, it means that above 50% health, all of our damage crits when is that or all of our judgment damage crits i should say when is that useful that is useful when the crucial part of a fight is actually the first part of a fight maybe a fallen avatar type situation where if you have a really good first part to the fight that's actually when it's most dangerous and if you get through that all right you're actually in pretty good shape for the latter part of the fight but having a lot of crit is going to devalue that because if you've got say 40 or more percent crit 
you're not getting as much benefit from great adjustment as if you only had like 20% crit. So that's why it'll be important to sim for yourself because there's various things that can affect the benefit of it. And as well, something that sims won't be able to tell you is what sort of fight is it? Do I want to be able to do loads and loads of damage right at the start? Is it that's when it's most crucial? Or is it actually more crucial right at the end? In which case, of course, greater judgment doesn't do as much good for you. The four set bonus just means that whenever you use judgment, then your next holy power spender costs one holy power fewer. This is not really as good as Blade of Justice straight up generating extra holy power. But just to show you how it sort of works... Use Judgment, you get a buff up here, it lasts for 15 seconds. Obviously you're going to cast a Spender in that time, so that's a bit silly. But then it's gone away, so you're not going to get the benefit of that. All the rest of them are going to have to cost uh, 3 Holy Power now. Until you can use Judgment again, then it comes back up. I've only got 2 Holy Power, but there you go. That was enough for that Templar's Verdict. So again, how useful that is might depend on a few things. Um, your Haste, notwithstanding, because of course the higher your Haste, the shorter the cooldown on Judgment, and with Judgment having 60% extra damage, you're going to want to use Judgment quite a lot. You're going to expect to want to use Judgment off cooldown. Again, nothing's set in stone yet, so let's wait until everything's been, well, finalised is a strong word these days, isn't it? But at least when it's very, very close to going live and we sort of know how everything should be, Judgment will do a lot of damage in its own right with this 6% extra damage. And let's just compare the numbers on my tooltip. Judgment here is doing 723,000 holy damage on this particular character. Blade of Justice, for example, is doing 832, but that's physical. So in actual fact, when we take armor into account, it's going to do less than Judgment. Templar's Verdict doing 606,000 holy damage. That's less than Judgment. Judgment is straight up going to do more damage than anything else we hit with. Um, that is ultimately the reality of the situation that we are looking at. So, are you just thinking of Judgment as being putting a debuff on things? The Templar's Verdict does more damage? Not really. Obviously, bear in mind that that Templar's Verdict damage is going to be buffed by our Mastery. So, is likely to do more damage than Judgment when we take that into account. But, of course, I can't say how much that would be. Because all of us are going to have different Mastery values. So, Templar's Verdict will have a very variable value compared to others there but we could easily be in a situation where if judgment's available we want to use it unless of course obviously you're on five holy power you want to use your spender because you've got builds available usual priority in that sense is going to reign so what about trinkets well i've picked out three trinkets here uh, there are a few more on offer um, trinkets are going to be powerful but there's going to be a sting in the tail. Now, I'm sort of thinking of maybe doing a separate video just on trinkets that is more general rather than just for Retribution Paladins. But let's go through this. So the Shadow Singed Fang is just a nice straight up trinket. It has its proc chance. It's got a chance to proc our primary start of strength. Also means the auto attacks have a chance to increase our crit rating. But there's no... Stat on it, primary or secondary, as a baseline. So when it's not proccing, it's not doing anything for us. <sighs> One of those trinkets just, you know, that will be okay. You don't have to do anything with it. It's just fire and forget. However, there are two trinkets of notice for us. There are six such trinkets altogether. But two of them are usable by us. And they drop off the last boss. Now that's quite important. So we have Kazgarath's Courage. This has strength on it by default. And it means damage and attacks have a chance to make our weapon do fire damage on auto attacks. It lasts for 12 seconds. Okay. That's just what it is. It's a little bit like Cinder's in some ways, isn't it? You've got, you know, you've got a stat on it, passive stat, and you've got a chance to do some damage, fire damage on it. Uh, there's nothing you really need to do to take account of that. Obviously, when it procs, you'd like to make sure that you're hitting something, that you're not just stuck out there. But then again, the only reason you wouldn't be hitting a boss or an ad anyway is if you happen to deal with a mechanic and you should do that anyway. So you don't have to think about this one. Here's where it gets interesting. And by interesting, I mean facepalm moment. 
Kazgarath shaping, and this applies to all such similar trinkets, for all roles have these trinkets. When empowered by the Pantheon, what that basically means is, when other people in your raid have these trinkets, your critical strike, haste, mastery, or versatility, in other words, a secondary stat, is increased by a certain amount for 15 seconds. And Kazgarath always empowers your highest stat. Now, the way this is intended to work is that the more people that have these sort of trinkets in your raid, the better this will be. It's a way, and this idea has merit. I'm not going to dump on this idea. The... It allows your guild as you go through each week and you get more of these trinkets to become more powerful. It's a way of getting the power of your raid to increase so the fights can nerf themselves a little bit, which sounds fine. That in itself sounds fine. The downside is, uh, the one mind, you know, little gripe on my part of you is, because it always empowers your highest stat, your highest stat may not be the stat you really want. It works on this assumption that you've loaded up on whichever stat you most want, but you don't always get a lot of choice in that. The fact that there are so few, although there's, in theory, many, many items we can have and we, we can sort of pick and choose which items we wear, assuming we're doing lots and lots of Mythic Plus dungeons, but for a lot of us, especially when you consider tier and things like that, there's so many things that occupy our slots that are tier or legendaries. I mean, that straight away is eight of your slots. And you pick those based on the bonus of it, not the stats. And the stats may not be ideal. So you could easily, is what I'm saying, have a stat that's not your best stat that is the most. And that's what's going to buff. That would be disappointing. But the greater issue is this. And this is what I should talk in general terms as well. But just to mention it here, the quicker you get these trinkets into your raid, not just you personally, the quicker you get these trinkets into your raid, the more powerful your raid becomes. So how do you get these trinkets into your raid quicker? You can't just think happy thoughts. Obviously, that might increase your chances of getting them drop slightly. You can't just sort of say to everyone, oh, well, everyone should trinket these, uh, coin these bosses, sorry, for the trinkets, because, well, you expect them to do that anyway. They're quite powerful. It's going to encourage you to do split runs. Now, there are a number of guilds who do those anyway, so this isn't something that's going to affect the, the, the most serious players anyway, because they do that anyway. This is going to put an extra pressure on actually the more relaxed players and the relaxed skills to think to themselves. I mean, obviously, they're very, very relaxed. They won't care. But <laughs> relaxed enough that they don't want to do split runs, uh, but serious enough that, you know, they don't want to feel that they're going to get behind in progress just because another guild rammed loads of normals and heroics to get these trinkets in their raid but more about that in the other one but there is another trinket and again it's it's a similar to this it's one of these sort of pantheon trinkets and we are going to want this but do you know what so is everyone else the new arcado crystal amanthal's vision crit haste versatility mastery on it your spells and ability also have a chance to grant you speed avoidance and leech for 12 seconds i'm not hugely impressed on getting those ones on a proc, I have to say, because that's just annoying. But nonetheless, hugely nice trinket. But again, Amonthal's Grandeur, when empowered by the Pantheon, this one increases your primary stats, so this increases strength for 15 seconds. Works on the same principle. The more of these that you have in your raid, um, the more powerful your raid is going to become because they have a cumulative effect, so to speak. Now, for this one, everyone's going to want this. Of course, the, you know, the Kazgarath's Courage is only going to be for strength users. So you think about that in your own raid roster. You're only competing with other rets, DPS warriors, and uh, DPS death knights for that one. Whereas Amonthal's Vision, everyone. You're competing with everyone. So what you'd generally say is that this one would go first to people who are going to benefit most from those secondary stats. We hopefully would be in a pretty good position for that, because of course, and this has been the case throughout Legion, all of our secondary stats are actually pretty close in value. So trinkets like this that just have a load of secondary stats on them are actually very good for us. Uh, it's not like some specs where they really, really want one particular secondary stats, but the rest can go hang themselves. We get pretty good use out of all of them. The fact that they're static is quite nice. Um, you know, the, the, the proc chance on what you might call the tertiary stats 
uh, is less than ideal, but that's not a big deal. I'm, I'm quite pleased that at least it's not like that for secondary stats because that just annoys me. I particularly dislike variable haste, but this would give us a nice amount of all of those stats. And all of those stats are going to be good for us. They're already pretty good right now, but Master, remember, is going to increase in value as a result of that extra judgment damage, and it's a lot of extra judgment damage. So thanks very much for watching. If you've got any further questions, put them in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for topics for future weeks, put that in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.